Hello, this is Chris, K6OZY, and uh, this recording is going to be about how to set up APRS on your Flex 6700 radio. The Flex 6700 can do 2 meters, and uh, with that, with the release of 1.4, you can now do FM, and so if you mix them together, you can have some APRS fun. Uh, the 2 meter drive level out of the 6700 is uh, only transfer level, so you do need an amplifier. I'm using a 75 watt amp from Down East Microwave, specifically made for the 6700, and it uh, increases the drive level to a whopping 75 watts. Works very well. So in this uh, video, we're going to show you how to configure a soft modem for APRS uh, AX25 uh, packet decoding, and then how to connect it to a uh, APRS program of choice. Uh, for that, we are going to use a free product called Soft uh, Sound Modem, and we're going to use uh, another product called APRS IS32. Google them both. So let's talk about the Flex setup in SmartSDR first. First, you need to obviously set it to the 2 meter frequency in the US. It's 144390. You need to set your input, uh, transmit, and receive antennas to the transverter, and you need to pick the mode of FM. Now, it's important that you don't pick narrow FM. I mean, uh, digital FM, although you may think that. Uh, I thought that initially too, but it was incorrect. Uh, the pre-emphasis levels on AX25 expects uh, microphone level inputs, and so it needs to be FM. The caveat to that is when you select FM on the smart SDR software, it normally would allow you to turn on the processor and everything like that, and that's where you need to be careful. So make sure if you're going to do APRS um, that or packet in general, in FM, make sure the processor's off, uh, and make sure that your transmit and receive EQ are both disabled. So down here, you can see my transmit EQ is off, and my receive EQ is both uh, are both off. Save all this as a profile, so that you don't uh, accidentally try to do it with it on, because it just will not work. Uh, it distorts it. So obviously, we're going to use DAX. So we're going to set a DAX channel to one on this, and you can see over here in the DAX panel that uh, incoming APRS traffic uh, is properly uh, increasing the gain, the meter inside of uh, the DAX control panel. So that's good. That's what we want to see. So now we're going to uh, configure the soft modem, uh, the sound modem, and it's going to need a PTT trigger. So make sure that in um, Smart SDR Cat that you have set up some additional COM ports. Out of the box, Smart SDR Cat creates a cat port on COM4, or at least attempts to if it's not in use already. You need to create additional ports uh, for PTT-based triggers, like old-school COM com port-based DTR or uh, RTS PTT triggering. So I, cr I create them in pairs of two. I normally create a COM4 a, of cat, a COM5 of PTT, and then a COM6 for CAT and a COM7 for PTT, and I use them in programs. Uh, so like 4 and 5 would be for FL Digi, and 6 and 7 would be for another program, so on. So if I needed additional programs all concurrently, I'd make an 8 and a 9 and then a 10 and 11. But for this example, we're just going to configure the soft modem to uh, uh, use COM5 for that PTT-based trigger. All right, so we'll go ahead and hide that, because once you create that, you don't need to see that anymore. Open up uh, Smart SDR, and then launch the soft modem. The, so the sound modem uh, is made by uh, a Uniform Z7HO, so just Google that, sound modem and his call sign, and you can download it. It's totally free. Single executable. There are no installers uh, for it, so you just simply drop the AXE somewhere convenient and run it. It'll probably write in any file in that directory, so you may want to make a folder for it so that you can keep the config there. So under Settings, we'll go to Settings and Devices. And in Devices, we're going to pick the Output and Input Device, which would be your DAX Audio Transmit 1 and Receive 1, to correspond with the DAX setting we use in SmartSDR. Everything else, just leave alone. The only thing you need to change here is then the PTT trigger. You can see I have set to COM5. And that's it. And then uh, when you hit OK, you will start seeing it decode uh, incoming packets. You can see as the packet shoots up there, you can see the decode right there at the bottom and the data shifts upward. See a little bit of waterfall, and it's pretty cool stuff. And that's all there is to it. So now, with this decoding properly in here, obviously you can visually inspect it, but you need to get this data into another program. So there is a standard called the AGW engine, and the AGW engine is a uh, TCP-based connection uh, that has been a standard on the PC for a long time for um, connecting packet modems. If you do uh, Google the AGW engine, you can see a lot of data on that. Um, so 
the program I'm going to use for APRS is called APRS IS32. It's a great program for Windows. It's been around a long time, it's still in active development. And um, it can connect to a variety of hardware, uh, physical hardware, or it also has an AGW plugin. And that's what we're going to utilize to tape uh, the connection between APRS IS over to the sound modem, which is then using DAX to hear from SmartSDR. So let's go ahead and launch this up. Now, because I've been using this as an eye gate for a long time, as soon as I open up this, it's going to send out my initial first beacons, and uh, we'll still go into the setups and take a look at the settings for that. So uh, I'll unmute it so you can hear some packet data here. And you'll hear a click in the background as my relay um, from my amplifier. There we go. And you can see that I was properly uh, digit. So the, the text in red is the text that you're sitting outbound. And you can see I was I was digit by quite a few things coming back. So that's great. So in APRSIS, just really quick, I can have a whole video just on that. But uh, as a quick uh, tip here, if you see something with an asterisk next to it, that means that it was data that was acquired over an RF port in the software. If you see call signs without a asterisk that means that it was uh, delivered through APRSIS. Because I'm running this as an eye gate, I do have APRSIS enabled and uh, I have the internet access enabled right here. Uh, this is what you need to have enabled if you're going to function as an eye gate. Then you need to create a port and I already created the port but I'll show you what it looks like anyway. You would go new port and then under port you would pick AGW and then name it. You can see there's a lot of drivers for a lot of different pieces of hardware in here, but we care about AGW. So I'm going to cancel that because I've already created one. I'm going to go down to ports and edit the AGW port that I have there already. Now you obviously need to enable it, but then there's a bunch of other toggles in here that you need to enable to determine what kind of operation abilities that APRSIS can do. Because I want to operate as an I gate, obviously I want it to transmit. And if you only wanted to do a receive I gate, you could just not tick that. And even though a you may uh, attempt to transmit, it won't. It just won't key out. It will never beacon. But I want it to beacon, so I've enabled. And I also want it to beacon out anything else that may be of importance. And then the two key check part marks are these two. You want to gate, this is what enables eye gating. So the RF to IS uh, checkbox is what gets stuff onto the internet from your eye gate. And then if there are return messages, like let's say someone's using their iPhone and they want to use the uh, APRS. Uh, a packet program on there to send a message to somebody uh, that's injected into the uh, APRSIS network and then if in order for it to gate back into RF and hit somebody who might be a real uh, RF user this needs to be enabled and this will allow you to hear information that's targeting an individual user and if you've heard that user uh, you will then gate that out onto your local um, RF uh, area and hopefully hit the target intended. And that's it. You hit accept, and then once you accept it, you have to enable it, and I'll show you that. I'm going to disable it so you can see it. It says AGW disabled, but the APRSIS connection to the internet is still good. And then if I re-enable the port, it will do its init and do its initial beacon. And uh, comes up okay. Actually, I guess it doesn't beacon initially, uh, only when you start the program. You can force the beacon at any time. You can click transmit. Uh, say no to move me to the center because it will it'll move your location it's about to beacon out I have it set to my home over here that's what that little eye gate icon right there is I'm gonna hit no and it's gonna send out another packet and there we go and I was gated perfectly back um, a tip on the DCD threshold slider which is really the only thing you need to worry about tuning in this application and it is um, a slider that determines the aggressiveness or timeout uh, uh, value of the modem. The farther to the right it is, the more um, polite the modem will be. Uh, it will wait a longer period of time and, and not and attempts to not to double on somebody. The more to the left you have it, the the quicker it will attempt to beacon out. So what will happen is this thing will send a text request to this program saying, hey, transmit this out for me it'll accept it and then the sound modem will sit here and listen to the radio and as soon as it's in an acceptable silenced area it will then go ahead and key the radio that's why when you hear me see me transmit right here that it's not an immediate pass through it doesn't go bang bang transmit it depends on the on the traffic on the air so i'll hit no here uh right when we hear some right there 
You can see it's not waiting and it decided to transmit. I thought it was appropriate time to transmit. Um, and that's it. Oh, it's transmitting again. Oh, look, I gated somebody. Awesome. And it's very stable. I've left this running for days on end and have never had it crash. So I hope that helps. Uh, go give it a try. It's an awful lot of fun. And, uh, you know, you could adapt this into many different things. You don't just have to use it on the Flex. You could use it on other software solutions. But it's the same setup uh, in any regards. So uh, that's it for now. And uh, I'll go talk to you guys later. 73.